Welcome to another NCAA.com March Madness Skype session. I'm Andy Katz. Pleased to be joined by Mike Dom, who is the ultimate jackrabbit. feel like you've been there forever. Only a couple of years now, third year. Uh, South Dakota State, atop the Summit League, major showdown against your rival, South Dakota. The only school that beat you guys in the Summit this season. So, set up this rivalry for me, Mike, because for those that have not been there, and I have to admit, there are two states out of the 50 I've never been to. It's on my list. I will get to South Dakota more than likely to see a Jackrabbit game. What has this rivalry been like for you since you've been in school? Uh, it's been crazy. You know, ever since I came in as a freshman, uh, the rivalry is real. And uh, both these teams take things very seriously when it comes to uh, in-state battles on whether it's a blue state or a red state. So ever since I've been here, uh, it's been one of the funnest games I've been a part of every time we get a chance to play against uh, USD. Now, I know you're talking colors there, not political parties with your blue and your yep. red. <laughs> but, yep. uh, um, you know, it is one of those rivalries I don't think that gets enough attention just because of the nature of basketball not being as big nationally coming from South Dakota. But you have helped put the Jackrabbits, and there's been a little history before you, uh, on the map, if you will. Uh, how have you seen the program develop over the last couple of years since you've been there? Um, it's developed in ways that uh, it's hard for me to explain. You know, the the guys before me, like Nate Walters, and and even the senior class and and the class above me that I was able to play with last year and two years ago, have really done a great job of of laying such a solid foundation for the coaching staff to bring in high level recruits and guys that are just willing to to play with each other and uh, and they just have a high basketball IQ and it's it's a fun fun thing we got going on here. All right, so you're. You're averaging like 23 a game. You've had a plenty of games where you've been able to put up those kind of monopoly-like numbers. What do you attribute to your ability to produce at such a high level? Um, definitely the coaching staff and, and my teammates all around. You know, the, the coaches do a great job of putting me in a position where I can score the ball and, and I have a lot of freedom on the offensive end. And then a huge, huge contribution from my teammates where they allow me to take shots that normally, you know, guys wouldn't be allowed to take and uh they just put me in great positions to uh to score the ball so if you were if someone wants to be mike dom someone says you know this is who i want to be when i grow up when i get you know good enough hopefully to be in college what were the skills and the drills that you had to work on to get you in a position to where you are today um, every day it seemed like I was working on shooting and that was the main thing, you know, something that you can't really teach to a, to a player growing up is, is your ability to shoot. And if it's, it's just the countless hours and hours in a gym of working on your wrist and the flick motion and, and just being able to put the ball in the hole. And I think that was one thing, you know, me and my mom would just hammer every single day was just shooting, whether it was from 30 feet out or it was from one feet out. So. And what drew you to South Dakota State besides the best nickname in college basketball? <laughs> um, you know, at the time it was uh, Coach Nagy here and uh, Coach Cooley was my recruiting coach. And uh, when I came up here on my trip, uh, the atmosphere was fantastic and, and all the guys were really well respected and, uh, and there was just a great program. And you could tell that this, uh, this community had such a, such a great feel and uh, atmosphere to it that it was something hard to resist. You know, we always look for the giant killers, the school that, you know, if they're a 12 seed or 13 or whatever, if you guys are fortunate to get in, what makes this team capable of potentially pulling off an upset like that? I think it's uh, honestly our mental ability. And, uh, you know, we just go into every day trying to focus on what we can control, how hard we play on defense, uh, being able to run our motion plays on offense and just taking care of the ball uh, from careless turnovers. And I think we look at each game the same way. And if we just go in and do what we do best, play for each other and and, uh, and have fun on the court, we're going to come out uh, with what we like. How have you handled in your world, in your bubble at South Dakota State, your own sort of relative celebrity? Um, I mean, it honestly hasn't been that tough. My, my family, my teammates and the coaching staff does a great job of helping me kind of keep a tunnel vision on on what's at hand and the practices each day and just focus on what I can control with with how hard I work, what I bring to practice each day. And I think it helps me just block everything else, all that noise out from the outside. All right. For those that just aren't as well educated on the subject, 
what's the difference between your basic rabbit and a jackrabbit? <laughs> the the jackrabbit's got it's a, it's actually a bigger body. So the ears the ears are bigger and the actual body of a jackrabbit's bigger. So it's it's quicker, faster, stronger. Uh, is it cuter than a traditional bunny? It's not cuter, but we're a little more ferocious. Okay. And how <laughs> often have you seen a jackrabbit hopping around South Dakota State? Uh, very often. You know, I'm pretty sure I see two or three a day just hopping around campus, whether there's snow on the ground or sunshine. What's the weather like, by the way, for this rivalry game? Uh, it's going to be below 20 degrees with snow on the ground. <laughs> but you play inside, right? We do, we do. So we don't let that outside stuff uh, affect us on the court. Well, I'll tell you, we're really looking forward to seeing what turns out with this one. And, you know, the Summit League, one of these leagues that does not get a lot of pub, uh, for those that have not followed it as well, what should people know about the makeup of this league and the kind of, the kind of places you guys have to go to within this conference? Yeah, the, the Summit League is, is honestly on the rise, and, and the teams we play, it seems like they get better every year, and the guys that come in every single year are, are evolving the game, and, and honestly, the Summit League is one of the toughest mid-major leagues, I would say, um, but what makes it unique is, uh, you know, we're kind of spread out, it's a, it's a different feel, especially for those Indiana schools, and the next thing you know, we're over in Denver, and then you've got three or four schools right along I-29 where you're playing against each other, but... Uh, all the teams are starting to evolve, and it's, it's turned into a really great league. Well, Mike, we appreciate it. We'll look forward to see what happens between South Dakota State and South Dakota. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm not trying to play favorites, but I'd love to see the Jackrabbits in that field of 68. Just, you know, I love the nickname, but, it, it, I, I, you know, it can't just be a nickname. It has to be, obviously, a school that produces at a high level and can compete at a high level, and certainly that's South Dakota State. Appreciate it, Mike. Yes, sir. Appreciate it, Andy. Thank you.